Hi, Rich Spisano here from Digitally Fearless, and this is number 21 in my playlist on the powerful tools of Affinity Photo. And today I'm going to do a very tricky tutorial for beginners, and I'm going to show you several things. First, I'm going to show you the difference between a gradient fill and a gradient map. And if you stick around to the end, I'm going to show you how when you're doing a photo manipulation, you can match one photo to the other or the parts of one photo when you place them in another, you can match them pretty well. So let's get started. So let's talk about this one right here. This is called the gradient tool. So what you can do in a gradient tool is let's just make a new layer and you can take that gradient tool and you can drag it and you can give it different colors uh, let's say let's do let, I'm gonna stay with the teal everyone talks about teal and orange so let's go with kind of a teal and orange kind of a look let's say maybe that looks more like a teal and then we click on this side and we go here and let's pick a nice orange the problem is if you go back here to that tool and start again and drag well now it's black to black and white and you don't want that you want that gradient to be live so here's what you do in that case I'm going to show you the difference instead of you picking a pixel layer let's delete that instead of a pixel layer you go layer new fill layer and on a new fill layer now you do the gradient map and you pick your colors I'm going to show you how to use these on photos too, so stick with me. Bear with me a little bit here. Okay, so there's your teal, and then we go here, and that's your, let's pick orange. So now, what happens is, if I go back here, this is live. I can change these around. I can change my colors. I can decide which way to go on that. So that's the difference. That's, that's how you make something live. There is another way to make live, and I'll show you in a minute too. So let's show you now. Let's take this photo, and you can use any photo. I just picked this photo out. Uh, no difference here. Now, if you, I'm going to duplicate that because I don't want to lose the original. Select it, Control or Command J. And now, once again, if I went to this gradient and I went across this, that's black and white. But if I did teal and orange, teal, and this is going to be an orange of some sort, that's what you get. And this is not live at all. Again, if you go back to that gradient, it starts all over and it's not very good. So I would never ever want you to do that. Plus I'm gonna show you the difference between that and a gradient map and why you would use different ones. So let's delete that. So let's first show you how to make that gradient live on top of a photo. Remember that fill layer we did earlier? Let's bring that to the front. And instead of normal, we go to either overlay or screen. You can always lower the opacity if you'd like. And then you can go back to the gradient tool and you still have your handles you can change colors you can change where they're going to be you could spread it all out that's kind of a more a stylish effect but it's not really practical in some cases so now i'm going to show you the difference on a gradient map now the first thing i'm going to show you on a gradient map i'm going to open up my last tutorial to show you about gradient maps and i'll explain what a gradient map is which is very different from a gradient fill in my last tutorial, I showed you how to use dodge and burn to get a better threshold result. So what I'm going to show you now is I'm going to hide this YMCA logo, which I did threshold. Now, this guy right here, I have a threshold. And that's the adjustment I did last time. And that's what we ended up on the last tutorial. But now... When you have a gradient map, let's go here, it's under adjustment, gradient map. The way a gradient map works is this side here is your darkest shadows. This side here 
is your lightest shades, your highlights, and the middle is your midtones. In this particular photo, I'm going to hide the gradient right now. In this particular photo, it is only black and only white because when you do threshold, everything turns black or white. So there are no midtones. So if we think that way, then we can say we don't need this middle one. And we can hit delete there. And we can decide what colors we want this to be. So maybe the background we want light and maybe something like that. And then the foreground we want maybe in a deeper blue or, oops, I'm going the wrong way. There we go. Or I can go to greens or I can go any color I want. Basically what we're saying is your darkest are on the left and your lightest is on the right. And since there are only two colors here, then there's only two colors. So that's your, your shadow and your highlights. I also, I'm going to hide that now. Hold on. Hide that. Uh, I'm going to hide that. So now we have a transparent thing, and I also pulled in a YMCA logo. And the YMCA, when I did threshold, it's a two-color logo. I can only see white or black. It's hard to see white. Let me get a close-up here and bring it over. It can, only, it can only be white or black. So if I take that YMC logo and, and take that one and do another adjustment, and I'm going color, color map. Now, again, there's no green in the middle because there's only two colors, so I can do that and hit delete. So now I'm able to change this YMCA logo or any logo that you have that's a two-color logo into any colors you want, as long as it's two colors. So I could say I don't want that red to be red. I can say let's do a YMCA logo maybe in... I don't know, maybe a green and a dark green, something like that. And then maybe the other side in maybe some kind of a yellow, I don't know, or an amber like that. So gradient map does shadows, highlights, and midtones. Now midtones are really important too. So I'm going to close this one up. I'm on this one. So let's go back to this one. So here we put color on top. We don't want to put color on top, so now let's first try this. Instead of a gradient fill, I'm going to select that photo, and I am going to go to Adjustments and go to Gradient Map. And I want you to see the difference here now. For example, on my left, I'm going to keep just two colors, just for now, and I'll show you why in a minute. I'm deleting the middle one. So on my left are the highlights. I mean the shadows, I'm sorry. So I'm going to make the shadows in the teal family. And then on my right, I'm going to make that in the orange family. And it really looks pretty ugly, doesn't it? But that's okay, because now I'm going to select that gradient. You can do this down here, but I like to see what my blend modes are, so I always do it up here. Now I'm going to select Overlay. Whoops. And that's there. And I can also tone it down if I want which gives me a little bit of a different effect. So that's usually, you can see that, that's cooler, and that's a little bit of a warmer effect, which is a nice effect. But now here's another situation. I'm going to delete that. Let's say you have this photo. Oh, by the way, before I delete that, let me bring that back, undo. I want to show you the difference between this, I'm going to turn that off, and then the color overlay. You see how different they are? I'll put that back on. You see the difference between them? Color overlay is just giving you colors on top, whereas gradient map gives you shadows and highlights and tones in between, which gradient map is really great for that. So I'm going to delete that fill now. And now I'm going to show you something. I did a tutorial. I think I was one of the first to figure this one out. It was in, um, I think... February or March of 2019, and I experimented with Affinity Photo. I want to put this girl, and I have her masked out. I'll show you her on top. And she, I'm bringing this in from another photo. This girl has in no way fits into this photo. And please, I'm, I'm not trying to do correct perspective or anything. I'm sure 
maybe we should be higher or lower, maybe like that, whatever. That's not the point of this tutorial. The point of this tutorial is I want you to see how we can color grade her very easily to match the rest of this photo. So what I'm going to do is see this, back, this background photo. I saved this. So all I need to do now is go into my swatches palette. If you don't see swatches, go to View Studio Swatches. And I'm going to hit the, and I'm going to click on the hamburger menu and I'm going to say create palette from image. Click that. And what it does is it's asking me for an image. So select this image. And by selecting it, this background image is called Science JPEG. It's the exact same as that background. And I'm going to open that. And what it's going to do is giving me the colors of this image. And what I want to do, instead of five colors, you can make as many as you want. I'm going to change that to three colors. And you could use five, but I'm going to change it to three. And I'm going to hit Create. And wait a minute. And now you'll see three colors right here. And what I'm thinking, and that's what I said the first time when I thought I figured this out, is it's trying to figure out this background photograph, which is the, the real shadow, the darkest shadow, the, the mid-tone, and the highlight. So these three colors would be the shadow, the mid-tone, and the highlight. So now this girl really doesn't fit in very well with this photo. So what you can now do with this girl is select her and go to Adjustments, Gradient Map. And you'll see her change all these colors. But now, remember, Shadow, Midtone, Highlight. So of the three colors, the darkest is a shadow. There's a dark brown. The, the midtone is this light gray. I'm sorry. The midtone is this tan color, and the highlight is the gray. So I'm going to select the one that says shadow and I'm going to drag the dropper to the dark brown, which is right there and click this to say, okay. And then I'm going to go to the mid tone, which is the tan color and drag that to the tan and then say, okay. And then I'm going to go to the highlight color and drag the eyedropper to the light gray and say, okay. Now she looks pretty bad and I could change the blend mode here, but I like to see the blend mode I'm using. So I'm going to change it here. So I select the gradient map and I go from normal to overlay and look at the difference. Look how she now fits in and you can change the opacity and you can also make adjustments to the gradient. But this is an amazing difference and how fast that was from that to that. This, this curl can definitely fit in with this photo right now. And again, opacity less, maybe, whoops, sorry, not that, opacity of the gradient, you can go less or more, and you can, and you can even adjust the gradient. If you feel you want to add more uh, shadows, you can go this way, you see that? Or you can go this way to add more highlights, or you can keep it there and add other points. And if you add other points, you can either add other colors or just gradients of these colors and adjust them. So that's the difference on a gradient map. So a gradient map is also live on this adjustment uh, thing right down here. And that's very, very different than taking, um, I'll do the same thing. Let's try this. Let's go on top of all of them. I'm going to go layer, new fill layer. And on the new fill layer, I'm going to do a gradient. Instead of solid, I'm going to do a gradient, linear. And then I'm going to grab my gradient tool and go across here, just like that. Now what I could do the same as I did before is I can do, I can add a point here if I want. So I'm going to insert a point and on my left one, I'm going to think that's the shadow, but it doesn't work the same. So you'll see what I mean. So I'm going to bring that, the shadow is the dark brown, which is that. And I'm going to add that there. And then the mid one, I'm going to go here and do the tan and and then the right one is the highlight I'm going to grab I think it was like almost a light gray and say okay and then once again I'll do overlay and what it's doing is it's still taking the three colors from here to here to here 
and it's not really giving her the same color as it's giving the one in the back. I can move them around, and but it's still not the same. She'll always be darker on this side, and, and, or if we switch them around. So it's not the same kind of thing. And so that's the difference. So let's get rid of the fill. There's another way of doing a live uh, gradient fill. Not as easy, but you can do it this way too. So let's hide this. I'm in the back. And remember, this is just a color fill. This is not a color map. But you can go into effects and say gradient overlay. And you can actually put this to overlay like that. And you can go here and pick your colors again. So I don't care. Let's just do teal like we did before. And then we go here and maybe we'll do orange. And there's an orange, which is not the same as a gradient map with teal and orange, completely different things. Remember that, but you can do it here. And in this case, you can't, really slide. I don't think you can use that. I could be wrong. Let me see. Now see, it, it doesn't allow you. You're basically starting over. You don't want to use that. But what you can do here is you can move the angles around this way. And you could decide, slide them in and out. That's a different way of doing it. I prefer this side. If I'm going to do something that's live, I'll use a fill layer. And then it's at least with a fill layer, you can adjust it and it's live. Let's go back to this. I'm going to get rid of that color in the background to get rid of the effects. And so that's the difference. The gradient tool puts colors on top. The gradient map changes the shadow, the midtone, and the highlight. I know it was a little bit complicated, but it really is important to know the difference between the two. And this is a great way to start with matching up two photos when you're doing a photo manipulation. Then you can definitely adjust it. You can get a color overlay on top of all of that. You can do anything to make them all match and look the same, add noise, whatever. But this is a good starting point. And don't forget to click that like button and subscribe button. Thank you so much for that, and you have a great day. Bye.